Hello guys, it's Nigel here again, at Nigel's Modeling Bench, with a long-awaited part 7 video of the Land Rover build. And in this video, as you know if you've already seen, we're building a short wheelbase conversion from a long wheelbase kit, and we're also building the long wheelbase kit as well. So it's come now time to paint the engines, and as um, many of you will already know, the engines in these army vehicles, they were a TDI 300, and they're basically um, painted in this kind of sky blue colour, which I've never found an actual paint that, that is a perfect match. Um, now, obviously the engines were painted all as one, so there wouldn't have been, um, you know, too much care taken. They'd have just been built and then painted over. I don't believe the gearboxes were painted in this blue colour. They would have been normal silver aluminium um, as they as they were um, our 380 gearbox had a black casing with an aluminium bolt um, aluminium bell housing so we'll probably do depict that so the transfer box would be aluminium this area here will be black and this area here will be silver um, and that's the same for both of them as far as I'm aware army gearboxes were just standard you know civilian colors now um, the actual air box and the turbo and everything that would have all been not painted green as well this is the modified one if you look back on my other videos you'll see i modified the exhaust system this is for the short wheel base um, so that would have been black and everything with the black piping turbo would obviously be rust colored on one side and aluminium on the other um, so this color here is basically just going to be painted all over the engine and then we'll do some touch up afterwards how did i make this color right Equal amounts of these three, so X14, XF23, and XF21. So that's sky, light blue, and sky blue. Now this is a gloss, um, so you will end up with like a satiny finish. And then when you mix those together, you'll find it looks a little bit too sort of dark, a little bit on the grey side. So just add some white, and it will basically bring it down to the colour you want. Now if I want to, I can come along with my white, and I can... Oh, that's a crusty old pot that one and I can basically get some more white and add it just to bring it down a bit and you can see just a tiny drop makes quite a difference to the actual color and this is thinned down ready for the airbrush using um, I've actually used a uh, the real colors high compatibility thinner because it was nearby so um basically I haven't used my airbrush probably since October and it's now January the 13th so um here it goes so um oops what was that something just fell on the floor gotta be careful when the dog's around because she eats everything so just gonna pour this in there pour some of it in anyway do a little test it's roughly about 18 psi and that looks fine so just go over the engine I'm not going to bother priming it or anything and it looks like this paint is a little thin too much thinner is in it by the look of it so just have to put on very very light coats and for the newer modelers amongst us this is basically what happens if your paint is too thin or you go too heavy with the paint then you get this pooling effect yeah and so what you've got to do when it's too thin you don't have to add more paint just spray it very very lightly dusted on and it will practically dry by the time you get around to it now if you want to add injector pipes and stuff you can um, obviously if you're going to have your, your bonnet or your hood whatever displayed open then you might want to add some detail to the engine I'm not going to be doing that so I'm not going to bother, certainly not on the long wheelbase anyway. I may add something to the short wheelbase after, we'll see. And if we're going to weather this out with a wash of oils and stuff, we don't need to be too, uh, too worried about how good it comes out, but we do want to make sure that the, um, the valve cover Locker cover, whichever part of the world you're in. We're going to make sure that's painted. Get the starter there. I need to check references. I think the starter motor would have all been blue as well. I 
And there we go, you get the idea. So I'll cut the camera off now and then I'll and then I'll come back. There you go, you get the general idea and for as I say for less experienced modelers out there, if your paint is too thin, don't give up, don't throw it away, don't bother adding more paint, just take your time. In fact I know some models, I've seen some videos, especially figure painters, when they're doing their um, priming, they have the paint ridiculously thin, so as not to lose any detail. And there we go. I'll get the other one done and then I'll come back. Right anyways, um, if you hear any funny noises outside it's because it's blown a gale and the, the gates are knocking about and all sorts of funny noises as the wind howls its way around the guttering and stuff. So if you hear any funny noises it's not me or anything. Um, it's not me with wind, it's the weather. Okay so engines are both painted now and I've gone round with some Tamiya XF85 uh, rubber black to colour the gearboxes in and then once all that's dry we can mask off and go around the bellows and then the transfer cases with the uh, silver. Um, so right, chassis. Now this is obviously the long wheel base which is the Wimmick and I believe these were all sand colour. The whole thing was painted sand um, once it was built and everything so I think the axles and everything would have been the sand colour. Whereas from what I can gather from what I've seen, the British um, home-based green coloured vehicles had a black chassis. So this one, this short wheelbase is going to have the green, um, the green British, you know, British Army green on it. And this one is going to be in the, the Wimmick brown. So this chassis and this exhaust I'm going to do in, in black. So if you saw my review, which I actually filmed yesterday, I'm not sure when this is going out. Today is actually Monday the 13th of January. Um, so yeah, this 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 will be going out as soon as I've got enough content to make it into a part seven. So if you saw my review, I looked at the the fantastic use sanders that Ed from Premium Hobbies has sent me, and he also sent me you know, these MRP paints, which I've heard loads about but never ever used. And this one is the 60 milliliter MRP fine surface primer in black. It's suitable for plastic, metal, wood, and resin, which is good. Um, so one thing I will do when we try this out, I am going to get a bit of scrap PE from my scrap PE drawer, and we'll try a bit on that barrel, and we'll try a bit on here. Okay. So we'll try that, and then we'll see how well it sticks. Um, I'm not going to degrease in there. Yes, I will. Actually, yes, I will. I'm going to grab a drop of acetone. Uh, where is my acetone? Okay, so we're ready to go. I've, I've cleaned this off with some acetone and I've gone round this end of the, this aluminium barrel with some acetone as well. So we'll see just how good this MRP stuff is. So as I say, this is the fine surface primer in black. 18 PSI. I've cleaned the gun out. So the, the airbrush, should I say. So we'll just... Um, Put this on here lightly and it certainly seems to spray very nicely. It's got only one downside in my opinion, it absolutely stinks. So I will do a little bit here and then I will finish off with my extractor on with the window open. But as we can see it has gone down beautifully. Now my main reason for trying this out is, as we probably know, us modellers, um, we know that, I'm just going to stand that there, um, one of the problems with any primers they say is for metal is they don't etch, they just rub off easily. So, you just dust this on here, as you can see it's drying behind me, so as I'm going there it's, it's drying pretty much straight away, just go over again. So in light coats and then I'm going to put a wet coat on and if it has got etching capabilities it will use the wetness to do its thing. So if I put it on wet like that, there we go. And we'll leave that to dry and then we'll see what that's like on another day. 
So this chassis, um, I'm going to be painting this in the black as well. And this is going to take quite a lot of work because I need to make sure I get in all the angles and everything. Now remembering these rear spring seats aren't even glued in yet. Now there's the rear axles, so they may fall off. I'm going to turn the air pressure down. Okay, so I've come down to about 10 or 12 psi. We'll see how it sprays, and that will avoid a lot of the a lot of the mist getting into the air helps keep the smells down so that when you've got these these lacquer paints the lower the pressure you can get away with the better it seems to be spraying absolutely fine I'll be doing this on my real Land Rover soon and I'll be using a, a paint called Coralus QDR and it's specifically designed not to use a primer so you, you basically cure, cure the rusty areas that you've got and, uh, and that's that. And if you watch my other channel called Nigel's Land Rover channel you'll see you'll see me use it. I've already done some work with the Coralus primer and their gloss black paint. Now this isn't too bad now because I'm spraying at such a low pressure I can't really smell anything. But I think what I'll do is I'll get the extractor on, get the window open and I'll finish this off camera because basically I don't want to be breathing this in. And you'll probably get bored watching me paint it. Flip that hook over. Land Rover axles, by the way, guys, are always gloss black. A lot of people tend to paint them semi gloss black and they do restorations and stuff, but they should be gloss black. The chassis are a satin and black colour. The later chassis, like mine, are, are dipped for what looks like about one and a half seconds. And they obviously electrically put the paint on somehow and it's about one micron thick and it's absolute rubbish and the weld preparation before painting is absolute rubbish. This spatter that you can basically knock off with your finger it's just absolute garbage. Yeah so unfortunately all these uh, newer Land Rovers that we all love and cherish so much because they're the last ones off the line. If you use them regularly and you haven't had them wax oil or any preparation done, that chassis is going to fall to bits in no time. All right, I'm going to go off camera now and get this finished with the extractor on. Just a quick interlude here guys, if you remember in the video I said not to use these flip up lids because they're the same as these that you get on these one shots um, and as you can see when you flip these open you've got that sort of effect and you've got all this horrible dry paint in there um, so don't use them. I thought I'd give this one a go because it's a different design look, you've just got a hole. The problem is when you pour the paint out it makes a hell of a mess anyway so that all needs to be wiped up and cleaned off of there okay so I'm not sure about how you go about actually getting that out of there neatly but I will have a think and have a play and if I think of something I will let you know anyway on with the painting okay so that's that chassis all painted and um, what do we think of this it's already on my paint rack this MRP fine surface primer well the pouring the thing on the top is not very good. Pouring it out of the bottle doesn't really help because you can see it runs down the side. Probably best use a pipette, but with all this with single use plastics and stuff, I kind of feel really guilty using pipettes and then throwing them in the bin. Um, 
we need to try and avoid this this single use plastic thing guys so i mean my pipettes here like here's one here um i bought a bag of 100 i've probably used about six in about six months so i i use hardly any and i just use these for thinners i tend to not dispense paint with them um but that's the downside the positive side well there is another downside is the fact that it stinks but we all know that and we can't get away from it we know what to do and it's got all the warnings on it it's telling us it stinks and it's bad for us so so that's absolutely fine um the positives uh you may think this is a negative i take this as a positive it is extremely thin it's extremely fine pigment it goes down you need to take your time this is not one of those primers like this one like this one shot where you can come along and just bang it on and it covers in one go no you need to take your time you need to lay it down let it build up the beauty of that is when you're doing stuff like this you're not getting puddling anywhere you're not getting high build up of paint if i were to spray this with this unthinned it would be it wouldn't have as good a finish um and also the the paint would be higher build because when you start to come in you're trying to get into areas like this and you you come in like that and then you come in like that and you come and you're spraying the same area sort of four or five times you will get a build up in that area i don't care how good you are how clever you are how good your airbrush is you will get a build up in that area the paint will be thicker in that area even with this stuff the paint will be thicker in that area than it is everywhere else but the beauty is with this stuff it's so thin and it dries so fast you saw when i was spraying this how it was drying of following me down you know and so you can sort of go in shh, come in here shh, come in there shh, and you can get into all the corners and all the nooks and crannies and not have any pooling puddling running or sagging but we can see on here i mean if you look on there the finish let me just check you can actually see it the finish is absolutely stunning it's beautiful i'm also really chuffed on a private note a personal note i'm really chuffed that you can't see any join lines where i've cut that chassis about so uh, yeah but the the actual finish on i mean i'm not going to do anything with that that is perfect for a chassis black that is perfect what i would probably do is thin down some varnish or I'll probably use some aqua gloss or something like that and just brush it on those axles to give them a bit of a, a glossy finish or even maybe just dry brush them with something gloss um, I'm certainly not going to try and mask and, and paint them especially being underneath the vehicle but I do like my my axles to be gloss so that's that one I've also done these um these little uh, turbos and air intakes and stuff so they're all ready to to go on so now we've got a look at the Wimmick. Now, I've done some reference, and from what I can see, please tell me if I'm wrong, but from what I can see, everything underneath, uh, other than the transfer box and the engine and gearbox, is going to be this tan colour. Um, now, I've got this old Model Master enamel paint, which is British Golf Armour Light Stone, um, <coughs> saying there, Germany and the UK. So, uh, it's number 2137, if you want to try and get yourself on it. Do believe, tell me if I'm wrong, has Model Moss just gone now? They stopped making paints. But this is an enamel. So I prefer to use acrylic. So I'm looking at the XF57 buff. And it appears to be very, very close. So I've got two choices. Do I use this or do I use this? Now I haven't used enamels other than washes for years. And I'm just just wondering it's that familiar old smell god that takes me back many many years when i was growing up and i used to pop over to america to visit my father um we would always go and buy a couple of models and he would buy some testers paints and that's what that smell takes me back to testers it has a smell all of its own it's nothing like humbrol it's it's a completely different smell so um, i'm assuming i can thin this with enamel thinners but what i'm what i'm concerned about is how on earth do you do your washes how on earth do you do enamel washes if you've got enamel paint? I guess you can seal it with acrylic, but then you've got another layer on there. So, I don't know. Let me have a think and we'll see where we go from here. Right, here I am. I decided to use the Model Master in the end because I haven't sprayed enamel paints. I'm not sure if I've ever sprayed enamel paints through an airbrush, to be quite honest with you. So, here we go. There's a first. Two firsts today. Two firsts in one video. So, um, yeah, I've used the Model Master... Uh, British Golf Armour Lightstone and Humber Enamel Thinners. I've mixed it about 50-50. I'm not sure. I'm sure there's... I know there's people out there that will not use acrylics. They only use enamels. Um, and I can almost kind of see why. It goes on beautifully and the finish is beautiful. But I just want to give it a just a once-over. 
just to kind of give it a make sure I've got in all the nooks and crannies and make sure that everything is uniform because um, as I said with that black primer the beauty of that stuff is that you can actually put it on and you can work into all the corners and not have any puddling you don't get that luxury with this one I mean obviously you could mix it really really thin but because it takes longer to dry it's kind of difficult to avoid the pooling I don't think we need to, I'm going to turn the air pressure up a touch. That's going to be about 15. That's better. I'm just going to come in from the, from the four angles. work around those axles a bit. I mean the beauty of this is tan plastic underneath so it won't really show through but um, I won't be going to town with the weathering on these. I want these to look like used um, used vehicles but I want them to stand next to each other in a you know if I put them in a show or whatever and, and both be the hobby boss model and people will say wow you know well done like those conversion. Um, I expect some of you are surprised that if you do resin parts, but uh, nah. Okay, so there we go, all done. Just go over where I touched. So yeah guys, if you can help me, I need some help. Look at all the paint I've got left in there. I'll need some help please on basically um, how I go about weathering this with um, with enamel washes because because uh, obviously the enamel washes will attack the, the paint. I'm guessing they would hang down anyway. Keep touching stuff. I'm used to acrylics and having it dry in seconds flat. <clears throat> so there we go. Now I'm going to put this back in the pot, which I know a lot of people think is sacrilege, but I always do, and I've never had a problem. So let me um, get all this cleaned up, and I'll be back. So while the paint's dry, and I thought I'd look at something else, and I made a schoolboy error here. I should have done this, put these front bumper parts together, and glued them to the chassis before I painted them. Um, not sure on the British Army. I think the front bumper will be green anyway, but. Uh, Anyway, this sounds like I'm trying to plug Infini products. I'm, I'm not. Um, I'm just basically showing you this is what I reviewed that was sent to me kindly by Ed from Premium Hobbies. And I'm just using it. So, you know, everybody does reviews of these products and says, oh, wow, this is wonderful. This is a great new knife. This is a great new sanding stick, whatever. I actually use them and try and show you um, how useful they are and how useful they are over other products and like the case with these I don't think there is anything else out there but um, this is a the, these are the standard sticks that he sent me these are called the zebra sticks and it's the first time I've used them I've got the 400 grit here um, and really really handy for removing sprue nibs on you know wide parts like this because they've got a very hard surface to them so um, yeah we can just come along and remove the sprue nibs on there also on the back of these parts we've got some pretty heavy ejector pin marks which are proud so we can just lightly sand over those again using this this 400 stick and if you really want to make sure you have got it flat you could use a bit of magic marker on there but be careful um, if you leave any in there it'll lose out into the glue and then it'll probably show through on your paint so better off using a bit of pencil but um, just to show you what it is I'm talking about where is my pencil? Yeah, that one's got to be where it is. Just to show you what I'm talking about, if you go over the part like this, when you sand it, you can see any low spots, and you can see there's some there's some pencil remaining there. So if I just keep rubbing until the pencil disappears, then I know I've got a flat face. Not me personal, the, the, the part has got a flat face and then we won't have any problems with the uh, with the seams. Again, we've got a low spot there as well. So we just sand that 
and then we end up with a nice flat face to glue onto. Now this one doesn't have the ejector pin problem so we're okay and it also has some raised detail on the bottom here so be careful when you're removing your sprue nibs. The other thing is when you look at these parts in here we've got some let me show you we've got some flash around that towing pin um, and also once it's glued together we're going to have a seam in there we want to get rid of. Now these are the ones he sent me um, yesterday as well with the uh, with the photo etch handles and these things are bloody awesome. Um, so here's the two mil. I've just cut this one out. I've got some 600 grit paper on there and I can just get in there like that and just literally I can show you up close. Just literally come in here with that and just and it's gone. So um, really really handy. I don't know of a, of a skinny stick that's, that's that skinny. Um, so we can basically just put these together now. I've got these holes on these sides and these holes, some half holes here. So I'm just going to once again <clears throat> with this one do the pencil trick again. And you can see now that these, these edges of these ejector pins are raised. So you really want to make sure you, you get those sanded flat. And then we're going to have to let this dry and then deal with the seam because the front bumper is actually a, a c-section so you wouldn't have a seam running along it i don't really know why they've made this they could have just made it as one piece with a hole in it and then put a pin through so they seem to have made a lot of work for us but never mind we're modelers eh so that's going to go through there it's going that way up so that these holes align and then they will come through and they will go onto the chassis. I'll use the black one because it's going to be drier. And they're going to go in those holes there like that. Okay, so we'll get these glued together now. And I can see straight away this one's got like a raised... It's got a raised area in the middle. So, get that apart. I'm going to use my 5mm version of the hard stick and just sand that lightly there we go that's better so we get some clamps on there get plenty of clamps so we use some clothes pegs oh, clothes pegs just falling apart like so and then one in the middle do I have any more sorry I hit the camera in my head guys this is one that I use to make a jig that's why it's got that piece of brass on the side of it and then one on the end I think I have to use an ordinary clothes peg just like so so that's all clamped together so now we can take some extra thin I'm not going to use the quick setting I'm just going to use the ordinary and just brush it in there and make sure we keep the glue away from the peg because otherwise the glue will capillary under the peg and make a mess of the surface we just put some on the end there and it looks like we're going to need a bit of Mr. Surfacer in here because it's not a very nice fit at all it's not a very nice seam you can see on the end there they don't really match very well let's get some glue in there and then peg it same on this end And then that one in the middle and we'll leave that to go off so I'll do the other one and then I'll be back 
Okay, so um, got the bumpers together, they're all clamped and everything You're going dry. We've got the chassis painted. This is uh, still a little tacky, but this is dry. Um, little tip for the newer modelers, I'm, I'm basically going through the boxes now. I've managed to get everything down to one box, which is great. Um, just going through, looking for what I can do to actually make some sub-assemblies up so I can reduce the amount of sprues and everything we've got. I thought, well, I'll do the wheels. I've already done the wheels for one of them. So I thought I'll do the wheels for the uh, for the other one now. I think they're both the same. Just check, just in case you're building this with me. Yes, the wheels are the same, so it doesn't matter if you mix them up. Um, but a tip for newer modelers, basically get the wheel halves off the sprue. Don't worry about doing the um, trimming the the sprue nibs off or anything. Um, just going to make sure there's no flash on the front faces because there is on that one. And there is on that one. And there's on that one. What have you got, Jess? I've got Jess in sat just behind me, and she's got something and she's chewing it. If you can hear funny noises, so um, yeah. So there we go. So don't worry about taking the sprue nibs off. Glue them together. Just hold them together. Get your tammy extra thin. Run it round like so. Okay. Give them a little squeeze. Put them down on the bench. Do all five, and then what you can do is come on with a heavy weight. So we know that the size of this is like that. So we can put one there, one there, one there, and then we can stand this block on the wheels. Okay, and that will hold them together, and then it will be nice and flat and everything, and let them dry like that. <clears throat> now, I did them a little while ago, so they're already dried. So once they've dried off, let's use the spare. The reason I didn't take the sprue nibs off, first of all, is the reason being is what you're doing, you're coming along and you're going to be rubbing down the wheel half and you may put a radius on the edge of the rim or something like that. This is the beauty of these, again, these hard sticks, the same as the smaller matador ones here, same, same beauty there, but they're a hard stick rather than a sponge. And what you can do is just come along 45 degrees and just roll over the sprue nibs like so until they're gone. Okay, and then, and you'll feel when they're gone because the, your finger will just rub smoothly over there. And you can do this, I mean I do the same with tank wheels, never take the sprue nibs off until they've been glued together. Now if one of the sprue nibs is a little higher, just come along and take that down first, just sort of rough it out and then, like so, just like that. And then turn around, come the other way until your sprue nibs are gone. And that way you can guarantee that when you actually do it, you don't end up with flats that way or angles this way. So that when you look at the rim, it's all over the place. So and then if you really want to come in with a sponge or use a, an 800 grit sponge, if you really want to, and then just come along, go around the whole wheel and that will just soften the sharp edge of the rim. And it'll just take off any little fine bits that are left behind like so okay so just to show you again come along with your sanding stick this is a 400 grit as you can see and just rub it over like so until your sprue nibs all gone and again if you want to you could come in with a bit of marker either side of the sprue nib like so and then when you sand when you see the marker disappear then you know you're down down to the, uh, the surface of the parent material as it's called and then you can come along with a sanding sponge again going in the sort of not 45 but 30 degree angle just go like this and that will just clean everything up and you get a lovely clean round rim and then when you pop your tire on to grab a tire it's going to look lovely now many people will buy resin wheels for these i've actually got some resin wolf wheels i don't know if i use them or not but um there you go and you've got a nice round rim with no big lumps or bumps or bits hacked out of it okay so um there we go that's that bit done Okay, so to finish this video off, um, 
In fact, no, we'll do some painting. Not to finish this video off, just to do a bit more on this. Um, I've taken the bumpers out of their clamps and I'm going to go around with some Mr. Servicer. This is my Mr. Servicer 1000 and as I've told you before, this is my probably my favourite modelling product and people take the mick out of me for it and it's all good fun and I love it. Um, you can see this is 1000 and it's gone a bit thick. If I just show you now a brand new bottle, this is a brand new bottle of 1000. Okay, now I need to give this a stir. But you can see straight away, you can see straight away that this is nothing like as thick as this one. Okay, so now what we want to do is thin it back. And this is what I'm saying. I think it's all about the pigment size, but if you want some 500 and you don't have any, get some Mr. Service 1000 out, leave it in the lid or something, just leave it for 10 minutes and it will go thick. So I'm going to thin it down, just put a drop of Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners in there. You can use ordinary Mr. Colour Thinners, but I wouldn't use any other product. Um, you would probably get away with the um, AK High Compatibility Thinner, but I wouldn't use anything really if, if you can help it get used the Mr. Hobby thinners and I'll stir this in now and you'll see that it will come out a lot more now the consistency of the brand new one okay so we can see there now it's more like that one okay and that's what you're aiming for so we can put this, this lid in on this one, put that lid back on. And you can tell how much I love this stuff, I've got five bottles of it. Um, yeah, I'm, I've, I'm a bit of a, a, a drug addict, if you like, of the Mr. Servicer world. If I'm allowed to say that without offending anyone. And there we go. So I'm happy with that now. That's about the consistency I want. So just get my paper towel, wipe that off. And then we can come along. I've got these in clamps. So we can come along. The other thing I often do if I want, if I just want a little bit thicker, take some, wipe it up the side of the jar near the top like that. And that will sit there and after five minutes that will have gone thicker. So we could just brush here along this seam going quite heavy. It's actually quite a nasty seam to deal with. So I could have actually done with leaving it a bit thicker to be quite honest but uh, I wanted to show you that when you're when you open your jar of Mr. Servicer after you've left it for a few weeks and it's turned into a hard lump of gloop. Not all is lost. In fact nothing is lost, sometimes it's a benefit. But I'll show you what I was talking about. If I take some of this now and just put it on that lid, like that, and leave it. It'll only be a few minutes. I don't know what my dog is doing, I can hear her. Sounds like she's combing her hair. And the same on this one. It sounds like finally that wind's gone, thank God. If you know me, you'll know that I'm, I don't worry about cold, I don't worry about rain, snow, but wind frightens the living daylights out of me. I can't sleep, I can't rest, it puts me on edge. And then my dog picks up on it that I'm on edge, so then she goes on edge as well. Yeah, sad isn't it? Sad little existence I have. There we go. 
and we can see on here this detail on top and that is actually they're depicting the bolts that hold it to the chassis so try not to sand them off if you do sand them off not the end of the road you just replace them with a couple of rivets or something but they're actually um, 7 16th heads if you want to be accurate or 11 16th sorry not 7 16th heads they're 17 millimeter heads or 11 16th if you're uh, still in imperial and there we go so we can leave that to dry I'll just show you I took that out of there what three four minutes ago and you can see now it's become a lot thicker so that's something you can do if you uh, if you want to Little top tip for you there which I'm sure I've said many times before I've actually done a whole video on Mr. Surfacer because I love it that much and uh, Mr. James Mower has asked me if I've used any on my real Land Rover yet nope but <laughs> I found somewhere where I'm gonna be so um, watch this space and I will do on my modeling channel and my Land Rover channel I will do just for James I will show him where I use the Mr. Surfacer right so again as I've said before I, I keep brushes dedicated to Mr. Surfacer I don't clean them off I just wipe them off and leave it like that and the next time you use it when you put it in as soon as you put it in there it'll um it'll be soft again so well uh, let's do some painting okay so uh this will finish the video off now it's time for a bit of painting and for this i'm using um Vallejo's model air metallic aluminium um 71062 this stuff on the brush is absolutely amazing um, yes i've actually praised you a Vallejo product um so we're going to paint the bell housing i've picked about the worst brush in my stash I think so I think after this this one will be uh, downgraded to the weathering pile so just painting the the bell housing that ring in front of the bell housing is on the back of the engine and although it's aluminium I believe from memory the engines I've seen it comes on the engine so therefore it would have been painted that sky blue color now it's up to you um, I'm not sure where the partition should be but I'm going to make my gearbox go back or bell housing should I say or front case go back that far I mean it's just this isn't at all accurate anyway so I shouldn't worry too much about it and with the exhaust and everything and and the cross members in the way you can't really see much of it once it's in there anyway I know it's unlike me to say that it's not the sort of thing I normally say but um, you know when it's this when it's this bad and then the front end of the transfer case goes up to the back of the gearbox remember if you're building the the Revell 124 scale series 3 it's completely different it's got a different transfer case different gearbox and then I mean if you're building an early an earlier Defender it would have had an LT77 gearbox not an R380 so and let's just paint this um the rest of the transfer box now in here so we'll go down to the back of there It'll leave the uj black so paint the front of the transfer case there then go over the top making sure we don't get any silver paint on the back paint of the trans brake around the sides there as I say I'm not being too careful with this because 
I mean, especially here, you're never going to see this. This is the top. <laughs> the body goes down over that. And then come down here into the back. Like so, around the side. And there we go, that's that job done. Well, actually, not job done, almost job done. some paint in there and there we go that's that's our transfer case painted just like that paint's getting a bit thick now it's starting to leave some brush marks there we go so that's both both transfer cases done. Um, there's nothing else to paint silver underneath. We'll run around the disc brakes um, and then we'll do some work on the exhaust and everything. In the next video we'll do some work on sanding these down. I think they're going to need another application of Mr. Servicer because the, the bumpers flicked out of the pliers. Um, the the seam is, is coming back through. So um, there we go guys. So Let's get this brush cleaned up. Oops. In the bin, I've kept a peck a, a, a pet. I kept a pot of Parmesan cheese. I keep I always keep plastic pots and stuff. And the plastic the, the paper wrapper that was around it came off in the dishwasher, but nothing I can find will remove the glue. So as a result, I've just thrown it away. As a result, I've got this pot that picks everything up all the time and it's it's really annoying so I'm chucking it away there we go that's that brush cleaned and that could go into the weathering stash and then we'll get that and then we get our cloth and we just wipe over the top like so and then we can our upturned Tamiya bottle back. That one's actually got black um, black sprue go in it and then put the bottle back on the shelf and we're all done. So that's going to be that for part seven was it I think part seven. So thank you for watching. Um, thank you for all your great comments um, particularly on the uh, Feedback on the um, Infini um, sanding sticks has been uh, very good. These things really are very, very good. I'm going to be honest with you now. Um, I have used this hardly at all. And if you listen, that's lost some of its grit already. So if you're going to buy some Infini sticks and you want hard ones, I would seriously go for these because... I mean, this, I think this is my 400 grit here. No, that's 600. There's the 400 there. Now, this 400 grit I have used, as you know, you've seen me use it loads. And that, that is actually coarser than that. That has got more grit left on it than that has. And this has been used for, what, two, three months? And this has been used for two or three minutes. So I would seriously recommend getting these over these. Um, there's still grit there, but you can see the green coming through. So let's see how they go, but they're certainly not as good as these are, the Matadors. Remember, this was a, a German um, wet and dry paper. It's actually the same paper as the paper that this is made of. And this was a Japanese. So... We'll see how they go, but certainly these are better, in my opinion, at the moment. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for all your uh, great donations to um, 
to my PayPal and my Patreon. It's very much appreciated. And um, I'm going to go on now and in the next part we'll do some disc brake painting or I'll do that in the meantime, whatever. And then we'll start getting these uh, these chassis up together, get their wheels on and stuff. And then we can start looking at plonking the bodies on. Bye for now.